I want to talk about just really quickly a risk management lesson because we opted out to not do the peak. Oh, there we go. I got the line. I got the line. I got the right line. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Free. Someone couldn't Is take that it home. like trail magic? Yeah, someone couldn't fly with it home, so they they left someone a free half thing of fuel. <laughs> Fantastic. It's kind of rad. <laughs> I almost want to swap out my fuel. And take this. <laughs> hmm. What's up, guys? Oh man, it's so so good to be in the Uintas right now. I am with Scotty. You guys should remember Scotty. He and I went on a trip. Almost this week last year. Almost. It was last week actually. Except we went to the desert. We went to the desert and it was stupid. Uh, it was way, 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 way too hot. Too hot. Anyway, maybe I'll link that that video here. But yeah, Scotty's here visiting from Texas uh, in the military. So he said, "Hey, I'm coming out. So we should go like climb a peak or something." <laughs> So what we decided is we're going to uh, head into Naturalist Basin here in the Uinta Mountains. And uh, we're not going to be doing any fishing or anything like that. We're going to uh, hike a peak. And the peak that we're going to be doing is called uh, Mount Agazes. That's what we've decided the pronunciation is. <laughs> but it's spelled A-G-A-S-S-I-Z. -S -S so however you want to uh, determine that is pronounced or is up to you. A Brazilian out there that can correct us. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's about 11 o'clock in the morning right now. So we've got probably a five or six mile jaunt into Naturalist Basin. I personally have never been to Naturalist, so this is a new experience for me. I have hiked past it several times. And the reason that I have hiked past it is because Naturalist is known for being incredibly busy. That it's just one of those places that everybody goes to but where we're hiking a peak and we're going to be at one of the lakes that's a little less popular in the basin um we should see not a lot of people and we're just here overnight anyway and i haven't i haven't been wrapped up into a book like that for a long time so i just wanted to like curl up and read it so if you want to get an idea of what the High, High Line Trail is like this. It is this the entire way. Up and down, up and down, and rocks after rocks after rocks. This is why Scotty uses poles. <laughs> Here's the beginning of the, the season and what it looks like. The joys of the downfall. Funny thing is, we passed a trail crew that is out here today clearing all of this. They might not get all of this today, but. Uh, this is gonna be their, their horse because it's gonna spend a week out. Kudos to them for volunteering to do that work. Obviously, not all of them are volunteers, but. A lot of them are. A lot of them are. And it's super appreciated, those people that take the time to clear the trails for those of us that come out to enjoy the trails. All right, Jax, this is for you, buddy. I told you I was gonna do a little shout out at some point, and I've watched enough Jax videos to, uh, to know that I need to take an avocado on the trail. The one thing that I failed, though, is I don't have my hot sauce, and I'm pissed that I don't have my hot sauce, so I'm just using salt and pepper, but this is a little shout out for my friend Jax. Cheers to the avocado, my friend. <laughs> yep, that's good. That was great. All right, so we've made it to the Naturalist Basin turn off. I honestly have no idea how far we have walked. And it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter at all. <laughs> yeah, so down this way, we'll take you uh, over Rocky Sea Pass on the High Line. 
which then goes for like another 70 miles or so. And then there's this, no fires, within a quarter mile of the lakes in this basin. And we will camp within a quarter mile of the lake, so. Yep. So no fires today. Sorry world. And this is what happens anytime copper gets around water. World's fastest land animal. <laughs> This view right here, and if you go this way, it goes to Jordan Lake, but we're gonna walk back to where we just came from and take the trail up to Blue Lake and hopefully see some waterfalls, but this was just too pretty to not go look at, because it, I just love the high you into wilderness. Love it so much. you can see this but it's pretty steep going up here basically we're climbing we're climbing we're climbing up this big bench to get up on top of where that waterfall was to we're at lakes you gotta give me time time to grow lord i'm a better man then it was just a week ago And will this save my soul Or just give me style points When you send me down below can't make out what it was I was trying to say situation we obviously just climbed up over top of that waterfall to Blue Lake but I'm not feeling so hot and uh, this week I've exerted a lot a lot of energy uh, I'm doing some work for my in-laws 
and just school and work and family life on top of that. I don't, I haven't been able to rest very much. And so we came back down here to Marat Lakes. Yeah, because I'm feeling like lightheaded and I'm feeling nauseous and just a little lethargic. So a little worried about the altitude right now because we're at over 10,000 feet, almost 11,000 feet. And uh, so came down a little bit to see if that'll help. But we're gonna camp down here at Marat uh, Lakes tonight. And then depending on how I feel, we'll jump up back there tomorrow and go summit that thing right there behind me. So yeah, it's been a long time since I've felt like this and, and had a, a situation where I've felt like this, but I can't deny what my body is telling me. And right now it says, get the pack off and get uh, hydrated and get some rest. So that's what I'm gonna do. So trying out the new Sawyer one gallon uh, gravity water filter. I've done kind of like a, a modification on it because the way that this handle is oriented is a little weird. So I tied a club hitch around the top. I'm pretty sure this is not how they like intended for this to be used, but it works. So give you an idea of what the flow rate is like, which it seems to be pretty pretty decent um, but I'm not gonna waste my water works for me and then you can also screw your bottle right onto that right uh, if you have the attachment which I uh, failed to bring with me but there's like the double threaded end that you can use which I think was included with it but yeah. It's pretty quick though. Yeah, it's not as fast as that beef for you, but it sure beats like squeezing a, a bag. This is what he's talking about. This is my little my little beef free half liter that I use while I'm waiting for my Aquamira tablets or droplets to work in my water. Because they take like 30 minutes. But I mean that's not bad. I can handle that. There you go. That's not bad. The That's whole kit all together is about eight ounces is all. So. For a gallon, just hang a gallon for all day. That bag is kind of a pain to like pack around though. Because you can't like roll it up really well. I don't know. It fit in the front of your pack pretty good though. Yeah. In that bungee? On the, on the, on the mesh pocket it did, but... I don't know. I like trying new things. So, so far, like, I'm a fan. I think it's cool. Scotty's giving my Terrapin hatchling a test run. It's super comfy. You like it? Yeah, that fit. You bet. I'm down with it. <laughs> he was pretty skeptical at first. I was, because I'm not a small dude. I'm a, I'm a 230 pound, not small dude. And, uh,. <laughs> These the whoopee slings and the you know it just it made it look real dodgy for my weight, but it's solid, 100%. Dinner time. Best time of the day. What you got? Uh, this has been sitting in my gearbox for like <laughs> maybe oh, no. a year, so I finally was like, screw it. This is a trip that I'm gonna break it out and just get rid of it. I was feeling lazy after my 22-hour drive to Utah. Didn't feel like uh, getting getting fancy. 
So I got myself an Alpine Air uh, veggie burrito bowl, and I have some uh, some leftover corn tortillas for lunch. Right on. I'm going simple. Pasta sides. I don't like these mountain house shenanigans. Usually I don't either. That's Dude, they give me the worst gas ever. That's why it's been sitting in my gearbox for <laughs> a year. Like, no joke, it's been in my little extra gearbox for a year. Ugh. So I'm running the Tox Titanium, 650 milliliter. You guys know all about that because I talk about it often. But I am using the Ollie Camp Kinetic stove. Scotty's got the Ollie Camp Ion Micro, which I have that stove and freaking love that thing. It's so good, so good. But yeah, it's just dinner time. Yep. Loving it. Dog day. We're talking loud because the stoves are loud. That's why. The Ion is not a quiet stove. <laughs> it's it's a Bunsen burner. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've been converted to the long-handled spoon. I have not used it prior to this, and I am definitely, definitely loving it. Mostly because I, I happen to misplace and lose my titanium light my fire spork, which is a, it's a shame. Like that was a sin, and I don't know where it is. But long handled spoon, yeah, I'm pretty psyched on this. So here we go. We've got the pasta sides in here. This is like one of my favorite lunches to make at home because it's cheap and it's like quick and easy. The only problem is you're supposed to put like butter and milk in this and I have neither of those with me. I normally do carry butter. Like do. how good is butter in the backcountry? It's the best thing. I mean, where's your little Nalgene? Next, next to had, cheese, I right? I thought you had it in that little Nalgene. No, that's thing. my... Oh, what is that? That's my hot cocoa. Yeah, butter's a beautiful thing in the backcountry. Yeah. So there's no butter in this, unfortunately. But, yeah, we'll see how this goes. It shouldn't be too bad. It's just not going to be as creamy as I normally would like it. I guess I could use powdered milk on this. Mm -hmm. That would be the idea. Um, but butter and cheese in the backcountry. Which I had at home. I had powdered so milk at home. Totally doable. Ugh. You could cut up some cheese in that dog. I should cut up some cheese and put it in this. Okay, let me give you a backpacking like secret. Everybody that goes into the backcountry that doesn't have like dietary restrictions or isn't a vegan needs to take a block of cheese with them. This is an absolute must in the backcountry. There's no reason you can't take like sharp, sharp cheeses, uh, like hard cheeses, dry cheeses into the backcountry because they will last a long time. This isn't as like uh, dry as I normally would get, but the Tillamanook stuff is <laughs> delicious. Tillamanook. Tillamanook. Tillamanook cheese is good stuff. So sharp cheddars, that is like your backpacking tip of the day. It'll last up to a week. Yeah, I've we've had like massive week-long backpacking trips. Yeah, week-long backpacking trips of cheddar cheese. And it was still fresh, still good, didn't make anybody sick uh, like five, six days into uh, a trip. Especially on like hot days. If you just Cheese get it, oh, it's so good. But if you just get it like in the middle of your pack so it's not being, um... oh no, a mosquito. A mosquito landed in my food. Oh shoot! It's down in there. It fell in. Protein. <laughs> Dude, did you fall asleep too? Absolutely. Holy cow! It's like 9:30. It's 9:30. It's like 9:30. How is it that late? It's still dark, like daylight out. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I don't know, dude. How is that? Why is that a thing? Oh, yeah. So it's like 9:30 right now, and. uh we did not just wake up from naps. <laughs> yeah, we just woke up from naps. <laughs> so we got into the tents to like finish eating dinner and get out of the bugs, which the bugs seem to have, have gone away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was not planned. That was not the idea that we were looking for. Was it amazing though? Oh, it was so nice. 
Absolutely, and I think I need that needed that more than anything than just sitting here enjoying just to be able to get away and like have that time to just nap was that was, that was fantastic. Nice. Got my long johns on. Spare you that image. But yeah, I gotta get things cleaned up a little bit and get camp cleaned up so that you don't attract the anim animals. No animals. I'm gonna show you this lookout that we have from our camp. Now my whole idea was finish eating dinner, come out here, start a time lapse and watch like the clouds with all the like alpine glow and whatnot. No, sorry it didn't happen. So <sighs> anyway, here you go. Such a beautiful, beautiful lookout. Looking out over towards what would be Granddaddy Basin here in the Uintas, right there in the middle of the frame. Yeah, this is pretty. Well, good morning. It's about oh, 8.30 right now. So it's a little longer than I had wanted, but it's part of being out of the backcountry. Sleep as long as you want. So I think we're going to get up and make some breakfast and then try to go climb the mountain. See how that goes. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning. Yeah. Really, really nice. So I thought I'd maybe give you a just quick idea of what our camp looks like. We're about to get up and at least go hit the ridge of Mount Agassiz. I'm still not feeling super great. My motivation to get up above 12,000 feet is not really there. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get up and try to at least go see the ridge because you can see into some of the other basins on the other side. Uh, which would be really cool to show you guys, but give you an idea of what camp looks like. Uh, this is what we're we're dealing with right now. So I'm in my black diamond highlight tent. I have to say that this is one of the best tents that I've owned, minus a few specific things. Um, and when I do my review, I'll talk about that. But overall, it's a it's a great tent. I've been really happy with it. I've got a little like pocket blanket thing that I'm running in the front of my tent. I originally brought it for the dogs to be able to lay on, um, and I have found that I am using it a lot. So anytime that I can get Cooper to carry that for me, um, to balance out his pack a little bit, I'm gonna carry that thing for sure. And then I've got my Terrapin Hatchling that has been awesome to be able to just relax in. And then Scott's over here in his Big Agnes Copper Spur. That's a really cool tent. Super cool tent, so. Starting to make our way back up to Blue Lake where we were originally planning to camp. But there wasn't very much option wise. Uh, so we're gonna head up there and then we're gonna gain the ridge and see how we feel at that point. So I've got Cooper in some boots because if you recall from when I did Osler Peak last year, he ripped up his pads pretty bad. I guess we should go this way. And I had to carry and pack him out six miles back to the car. Ask me how fun that was. How fun was that? That sucked. Well, there's Rocky Sea Pass. That's awesome. It's not as steep as it looks from down low. Yeah. Yeah, the zig, zigzag, this one zig looks pretty good. And then hopefully, there. So Rocky Sea Pass, straight back here, 11,400 feet. And then you've got Shaler Lake up here, 
Jordan Lake is going to be down lower. But once you get over Rocky Sea Pass right here, it drops you down into the Rock Creek Basin. So, pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm winded. But this gives you an idea of what we're going up. Huh? A little winded. Yeah. yeah. Here we go, we're finally getting to the top of the ridge. Oh baby. I was just telling Scott this is one of my favorite things. Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So this peak, Agazes, and then we'll move over this way, and that is Hayden Peak. I do not know what that one is, but this basin that we're looking down into is Middle Basin. Uh, so this lake that is all the way back here, that is McFeeters, and I believe this is Ryder Lake. And then over here, right behind, well this peak right here, this is uh, Spread Eagle Peak, and then right behind it is Osler Peak, uh, which I did last year with my buddy Dane. And uh, yeah, you, that's not the the summer right there. It's just to the to the right over there, or Osler. But on the other side of that ridge is uh, Amethyst. <coughs> Excuse me, Amethyst Basin. So, what do you think there, Scott? Uh, we'll have a lesson on why we're not going to do this later. Yeah. Um, yep, but it's worth a 22 hour drive to Texas, that's for sure. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> All right, now that the wind has died down and we've come off the ridge a little bit, I want to talk about just really quickly a risk management lesson because we opted out to not do the peak and for very specific reasons. So, I have not been feeling super good ever since we got up into Naturalist. And uh, to go up onto Agazes behind me there at 12,400 feet, that is just more elevation gain than I am willing to uh, put myself through with how I'm feeling right now. And I think it's really important that people understand that it's okay to make decisions that go against what you had planned. Even if it's only a 12,000 foot peak, man. Like, yeah, 12, I mean, 12,500, not actually that much. It's in the grand scheme of things, that's not that tall. Like, those of you that live on the East Coast, sure, like, some of you only see 2,000 foot uh, peaks and you're not very high uh, in elevation. So, for us, like, coming up to 12,000 feet where we live at 4,000 feet is like, it's not that big of a deal, but you still have to be really careful with paying attention to what your body is telling you. And right now, my body is telling me, don't go up there. It's, it's a recipe for something bad to happen that could prolong uh, the time spent here and ultimately lead to an injury, which is not what you want to have happen when you're out here in the backcountry. So. It's, it's okay to make tough decisions that don't allow you to accomplish the goal or the reason that you came out here. So. And I'm not willing to do it solo, so. Yeah, so the fact that. I came here from Texas and uh, I was at 800 feet, so not really willing to do, I probably could, but I'm not willing to do it solo. That'd be kind of stupid on my part. Yeah, so, and, and to be totally honest, like these high you into wilderness peaks are not technical climbing routes like they're not we're not roping up we're not roping up they're not difficult they are strenuous uh, because you are at higher elevation and you're exposed and a lot of things could happen but 
really anybody could do these peaks if they're careful. Uh, we're just making the decision based on how we feel to not go uh, to the top of this. So we're gonna head back down to camp, get things cleaned up, and we're gonna head back to the car. So Woo! that's our plan. <laughs> Oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. I got the line. I got the line. I got the right line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's this look for me? Worth it. It's a solid look. Feet are cold. That was worth it. Worth it. Yeah! Step back and go, dude. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Around me in this darkness, now you bring me light. Now I won't breathe till you come close. Well, see you later, Blue Lake. It's been nice. That was super refreshing. And that is not something I ever do. I don't know. Maybe I'm a wimp. But that was very refreshing. Very refreshing. <laughs> and we've got a thunderstorm coming in. Yeah, yeah. Get off the ridge. You went to thunderstorms are one of my favorite things about the Uintas. They are noisy and sudden and exciting. <laughs> I really, really like the thunderstorms. But they can be scary at the same time. I've been in some really scary uh, lightning storms here that uh, at one point was in the lightning position in my tent with my wife it's like two o'clock in the morning and we are in the lightning position on top of our pads and lightning and thunder crashed at the exact same time uh, literally literally struck the meadow right across from where we were uh, camping so that was fun
fear her honesty. I fear her honesty. I fear her honesty. I fear her honesty. I hope, I hope, I hope I'll be okay Okay I fear I'll want to stay I fear I'll want to stay We just stopped on the trail with about two and a half miles left. And uh, it's kind of like the worst part of the trail at this point. <laughs> so rocky. Uh, it's so rocky and it's like all up and down, up and down. And then the last like half mile is all uphill. I think you gain like 300 feet in the last quarter mile, which isn't that much like I get that. But when it's the last quarter mile. When it's the last quarter mile, you're like, I don't want to go uphill anymore. But broke out the cheese and wheat thins had a bunch of people pass us some like an older couple and some kids that went on a long hike and a ton of trail runners lots of trail runners but i think this is the best part it took him all but five minutes to pass us <laughs> he's dead <laughs> all alone is when my needs do start to roll Ever find myself, I'm gonna give myself away. If I ever find myself, I'm gonna give. All right, we made it back to the cars. About 12 miles total for the trip. So, there you go, Naturalist Basin. Thanks for watching guys as always. And uh say my to Scott. Hey. <laughs> Thanks until next time. Yeah. But there uh next time. there will be next time. So you see bet. you guys.